Just last week, I was invited out to the NASCAR Cup Series race at Circuit of the Americas to shoot for one of my favorite race car drivers and just all around one of my favorite people, Kamui Kobayashi. Kamui was competing at his second NASCAR Cup Series event with Toyota and 2311 Racing. It was a huge honor for him to ask me to come out to Circuit of the Americas and make some content for him. So today we're gonna look at the final recap video that I made for him that got some pretty good play on social media. I posted a couple of short things about the edit, a little bit of a timeline breakdown and whatnot. And I asked people, do you wanna see a full YouTube breakdown? And quite a few people were pretty enthusiastic about that. So let's do a full breakdown breakdown of the edit. I'll walk you through everything. I'll talk about some of the equipment that I used and why I made the decisions that I did to use certain shots and certain types of effects. But before we get into any of that, let's take a look at the full video. So I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. I had a great idea in my mind for what I wanted to make. I had picked the music uh, well in advance and just sort of built around it and was able to deliver the edit pretty quickly. I believe Kamui had it you know, on his phone, airdropped to him within two hours of uh, the race being over. So one of the things I try to do to separate myself, you know, in you know a very thick crop of videographers is to deliver high quality content, but also deliver it quite quickly. And that all comes with pre-planning. In terms of the equipment that I used, it was pretty light. I just had my Sony a7S III with the 24 to 70 Sigma art lens, as well as the 100 to 400 G Master, then a simple Rode NTG mic, uh, a couple of uh, Nisi variable uh, neutral density filters, and then I used a Ronin RS2 gimbal. And that's basically all I used. I recorded onto my Lexar Gold Series CF Express A memory cards, which are like the top of the line memory cards. I absolutely love them. And that's pretty much all I brought in one simple little backpack with me to Coda. I wanted to travel light for the event. I just had the one driver, one client, so didn't need a lot of stuff. I didn't even use an external screen. Also, outside of a few gimbal shots, everything that you see in the video is handheld. I didn't use a tripod, didn't use a monopod, just shot handheld. I should say all the equipment I used is linked uh, down in the description below, and those are Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on them, you go through that link and you buy the product, I do get a small commission. Be very transparent about that. Now let's hop into the edit. This piece was edited in Adobe Premiere Pro, and then I also used uh, Adobe After Effects. Uh, the programs link together quite well. Uh, if you're familiar with Adobe, you'll know that if you just right click on any clip in the sequence, you can simply go replace with After Effects composition, and then it will open that clip in After Effects, and you can do a bunch of things in After Effects that maybe you, know, you can't do in Premiere Pro. So you'll see the timeline is uh, very simple. Uh, it's just the adjustment layer on top, which has our color grade on it, and then all of our clips down below. The pink clips that you'll see here are clips that have been uh, using that link sent to uh, After Effects. So they're just some extra added effects we did, but we'll get into that. So we'll start uh, right, of course, right at the beginning. So this first shot you see here, uh, this is just a beautiful shot done on the Friday afternoon. Uh, I had my gimbal uh, like this, kind of low slung, uh, the what do they call the briefcase mode uh, to shoot this. And I wanted just a nice opening shot. And then I did a bunch of quick transition shots. So if you see all of the edits, they follow the music actually quite well. And then we get a shot of, you know, Kamui's name on the car. But you'll notice as well, if you look at deeper into the timeline here, you'll see that we have all of these different audio tracks down below. And these are all different camera shutter and like click sounds that add something to the edit. So rather than just having the music going bump, 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 we have like those clicks in there as well. 
And then I thought as we switched from Kamui's name to the Coda Tower and the timing stand that it was kind of an abrupt cut. So I added this whoosh sound, this whoosh sound uh, down below, which just helps with the transition. There's just something about having that sound in there that helps your mind sort of transition to the next shot. And then we get another set of those clicks. And the reason I did this was I wanted to show some of the sort of expanse of the event. One of the things I love with shooting car racing is being able to show, you know, the fan experience and different things that are happening and show things, you know, that are more than just the race cars on the racetrack. Show the human side, show people enjoying it, show the buildup and the expanse. I think it's really important to help set the stage. And if you'll notice, we've been able to do kind of, you know, an introduction of the car, an introduction of the event, all in the first six seconds of the video. And I think that that's really important just with how short people's attention spans are now. You wanna have quite a few cuts early on in the video to get people kind of you know drawn in to what's happening. So if we move along here, we'll now at right at the six second mark, we're gonna see Kamui for the first time. You'll also notice down at the bottom here, there is an audio track, and this is just the sound of an outdoor crowd. This is a stock sound. Just something in the background to make, oh, we're at a race, maybe we'll hear some crowd noise and just something to help fill it out rather than just having the music. And this is one of my favorite shots that you'll see uh, in this piece. I've had quite a few people uh, comment on this. This is the shot of Kamui walking with everyone blurring around him. Now it's not perfect. If we go full screen, he's not like perfectly sharp. I mean, there's a couple spots there where he's pretty sharp, but uh, it's still a little bit blurry. It's a very hard technique to do. And it's something that I've tried to do a few times and never really been able to pull it off. And this is just the first time I've been really happy with it. So I was inspired to do this. Uh, there's a scene in Everything Everywhere All at Once where uh, Michelle Yao's walking. Uh, it's kind of the uh, award ceremony like multiverse, you know, segment and and they do this sort of effect and I was reading that they shot it at a strange frame rate. So what to get this effect, what I did was I shot this in on the A7S3 in the S and Q mode. Uh, and I changed the frame rate to 8 frames a second and then stopped the shutter down to 1/8. Put the camera on the gimbal, had Kamui walk and just followed him while everyone was walking kind of in the opposite direction so we would get that blur and that's how we achieved this effect. And then you'll notice as well if we look at the effects controls there is a small we start at 121 on the scale and then it slowly actually zooms out. So that just adds a little bit of something as the shot kind of zooms out. So uh, very happy with how that shot turned out. I think it's very unique. I've had quite a few people message me and ask how I did it. So that's how I did it. It's actually a lot simpler than you think. It's just about matching the speed of the person walking, which was really difficult to do in the garage. There was people everywhere and kids not paying attention, running around, but we were able to get it and I'm very happy with, uh, with how it worked out. So then we get transition into the track walk that morning. Great shot, uh, backlit of the sun. I'm very new school when it comes to shooting uh, sun. I love having you know the backlit look rather than you know the old school approach of filming is that you want the you know the light on your subject. I kind of like to shoot from behind and get that that those sort of flares and things. So I think it worked really well. And then we get another set of these really quick transitions. And these are just simply shots of details of the track. Uh, nothing crazy. You can see there's like a tread mark there, which is like, that doesn't make any sense because, you know, they race on slicks, but hey, there's, there's tread marks, you know, nice shot through the guardrail there, uh, which I'm really, really happy with, just something different. And then we also get this really quick shot uh, that I just was on the track walk and I thought that looked kind of funky. So we get that really quick transition. And then we get this beautiful shot of the pit lane sign. And that's what I love about tracks like Circuit of the Americas, these FIA grade one circuits that have proper garages. And they have like cool things like the line, the red line on the ground says pit lane, things like that. And you can see the floor is actually quite reflective, right? If you look at the left side of the frame, you can see the fuel canisters here in a reflection. And if we go back to the beginning, that first shot, obviously you see, you know, quite a bit of reflection on the floor, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, reflective floors is the best. They have them here at Coda. Uh, Portimao is another great circuit that has uh, the reflective floors in the garage, but we'll continue on. You see, we still have the, the, the audio of uh, the crowd noise, so I'll kind of isolate that for you. You can actually like 
barely hear it, but it is there. Uh, now Siri thinks I'm talking to her. And just kind of faded it out eventually. So we have another whoosh into the pre-race. And you'll see we have our first shot uh, that is uh, connected to Adobe After Effects. And it doesn't really look like there's any effects here, but there is actually. So if we go into this Adobe After Effects um, project and kind of go back to that linked composition, all I did was add a little bit of motion blur. So if we click here, go to the effects controls, you'll see we have pixel motion blur. And all the only adjustment I made was making the shutter samples 15. I think the default is five. Uh, 15 looks a little bit more realistic. So the reason for this is because this shot was done at 120 frames per second and then sped up to 24. I shot in the S and Q mode. And I should mention when I shoot my slow motion, I shoot slow-mo always in the S and Q mode on Sony cameras. I don't shoot slow motion in the video mode. And the reason for that is because I wanna shoot at the highest quality on the A7S III and my FX6, which is the intra. And when you shoot intra, if you wanna shoot variable frame rate at, you know, on the regular movie mode, the highest you can do is 60 frames a second. And I think slow-mo 60 frames per second just really doesn't look that good, especially in 4K. So I just shoot in the SQ mode, yeah, I don't get any sound, but I don't worry about that. Um, there are a lot of people who always shoot in 60 or always shoot in 120 in a lower quality because they want sound and they want the ability to maybe slow it down. But then I just think that a lot of their footage when played back at 24 looks really weird because the shutter is too high. It looks really jittery and strange, especially shot handheld. And I just try to avoid that and go for a more cinematic look. So uh, when I do speed my s &Q up, if I want a speed ramp or something, I'll tend to add pixel motion blur or CC force motion blur. It's another effect to just add some blur to kind of make it look more real. Like it had a, a proper shutter speed or shutter angle at that you know normal 24 frames per second. So that's why I did that. It's barely noticeable to anyone, but I notice it and it bothers me. So I add the motion blur back in. We'll hop back into Premiere. We've just got some more shots. Um, you'll notice I do like to edit to the music quite a bit. So you'll even see the fist bump is right on the, the big clap sound. Then we see the 50, another whoosh. More transitions on the clap, we get the pre-race buildup, and then the music gets a little bit quieter. And then you'll notice there's actually quite a big difference in the music. So what I did here, there are actually three cuts in the music. There's a cut here, there's a cut here. And the reason for that is because I've actually chopped this track up to make it shorter and to have it build up when I want it to build up. So I've changed it around and I've also used uh, the track is called Rhythm of Violence and I got it off audio.com and I've used both the instrumental version and the lyrics version and mixed them together. So I had the lyrics version kind of start right when the race sequence starts because it's a very distorted vocal line and I think it sounds really cool. You can't really understand what he's saying and it just fits really well and it had more energy than the instrumental track did at that point. So I just chopped them up, mixed them together. Uh, I'm a musician myself, I play the guitar and everything. So I find that like really easy to be able to chop music up and have it sound the way that I want it to sound. So that's why I made that decision. And speaking of audio.com, this was my first experience uh, using audio.com. Uh, it's a brand new uh, audio library or music library to me. Uh, and they asked me actually to be an affiliate and they set me up with a pro account and I'm absolutely loving it so far. It's a really cool, music service that has um, the pro account has link match AI where you can like drop a Spotify link to a song in and it'll, you know, give you songs from their library that sound like that. You know, they're good for YouTube monetization. They're good for your uh, client work up to a hundred employees in size. So big fan of audio so far. And if you want to try it out, there is a link in the description below. Like I said, I am an affiliate. So I do get a commission if you sign up, but I do have a discount code, which is save 70. If you use my code save 70, through that link and sign up for the pro account, you get a 70% off your first year of a pro subscription. They also have an even more like inexpensive uh, creator version, which is just for your personal projects and things like that, but it's even cheaper. So if you're just learning how to edit and want to making movies with your friends, that's a great option at a very affordable price. And they even sell lifetime memberships at a pretty big discount. So it's definitely worth checking out. Just go to audio with two eyes.com or 
Even better, use the link in the description below. Like I said, you sign up to that link, I do get a small commission. Totally transparent about that, but it is a great service. As you can tell, like this is an amazing track and uh, I use it for you know one of my biggest clients. So it's an awesome service, check it out. So at this point of the edit, we've had the intro and we get this really quiet portion where we sort of just get Kamui stoic in the car. And then I cut to this shot of him actually putting his visor down. And then we go into the race. And you'll see the shot here, again, is linked to After Effects. So I did the same effect here. I just added pixel motion blur to make this look more realistic. Because I do a little speed ramp. And then I did an effect that I do uh, quite a bit, which is a in-camera transition. So you'll see I pan the car to about here, and then all I do is whip the camera. And then we add a little uh, riser sound down here, this riser sound. So you can just barely hear it. It's like that little spice that you don't really notice, but the food tastes delicious, so, you know. And we're into the pit stop sequence, and you'll notice Using the audio again, you're going to hear that clap happen right as the car hits uh, the pit board. Right there. And that's again one of those little no things that not a lot of people notice, but it really helps with the flow of the video and just makes it more pleasing to watch. Like I said, the, the example I always use is like the spice in the food that you don't notice, but the food tastes great. So, you know, it, it served a purpose. We have the rest of our race sequence. There's some more of our uh, you know, After Effects compositions here. These are just, again, just adding pixel motion blur. So nothing crazy, just right clicking, you know, going replace with you know, After Effects composition and then adding that pixel motion blur and changing the uh, shutter samples to 15. And I love this shot as well because you get to see the, uh, the flames coming out of the side of the car. And then basically, it's just a very abrupt sort of end to the piece. And we end on the Toyota with the kind of scratched up bumper to show, hey, this is NASCAR and there was contact. So we want to show, yeah, he was racing with Toyota, but also like it was a rough race with a lot of contact. So that helps, um, you know, get that across. But then we'll also see, I use this, this shot right here, um, which is a very quick, I can't remember how many frames this is. Uh, if I go, so it's 11 frames. Uh, and basically what it is, is just a shot of some tires. Uh, this is just in turn four in the S's. And all I did was put my camera at 50 millimeter and just swip, swing the camera back and forth at uh, 24 frames a second with a true shutter speed of, of 50 and just it's just a transition shot, that's all it is. And I added that cinematic riser sound again to help with the transition. And you'll see it just kind of helps you kind of do an abrupt change from the action on track to the post-race action, so. So the last thing I just wanna talk about quickly is the color grading. Um, so I've had a lot of people message me saying the color grading on this is amazing. And I say a lot of people, one person messaged me about this to say the color grading was good. And the thing is, I'm not really good at color grading. There's a reason that colorist is an entire job. I'm not a very good, you know, colorist. It's not really my forte. My forte is shooting and editing. So I use kind of like some cheat codes when I, uh, when I do my color grading. So what I did for this was I just used the phantom LUTs. So if we actually look at my color correction on the side, uh, the LUT that I input is the Vision Teal A7S3 Legacy LUT. And these are from the Phantom LUTs done by Joel Falmalaro, is that how you pronounce his last name? I did pay for them, I didn't pirate them. They're incredible LUTs. I highly recommend you check them out if you shoot S-Log3 on a Sony. Can't believe I didn't message, uh, mention that. This entire uh, video was shot in S-Log3 on Sony, uh, usually overexposed by two stops, which is the same thing you're seeing right now of me talking, it's S-Log3 overexposed by two stops. So I just dropped that Vision Teal Legacy LUT. It's one of my favorite LUTs. I also have the pack for the FX6, uh, but they are very similar. So I just dropped that on the adjustment layer. I did a very small curves adjustment, just brought the highlights up a bit and brought the shadows down a bit. And that's essentially all I did. 
Outside of that, I basically just quickly adjusted each clip, just did an exposure adjustment. You know, I did a little bit of contrast in a few spots on this clip, but nothing too crazy. That's all I did for the color grading. Um, I do have DaVinci Resolve uh, on my computer and I'm trying to learn how to use it, but it is like a foreign language to me working with nodes, but I would like to get better at my coloring. Um, but I'm just so deep into the you know Adobe space and using Premiere and I, I can, it's like the back of my hand to edit in Adobe Premiere. So uh, I just stick with that and do the color grading through there. But again, don't feel bad about using LUTs. And if you're not confident with your color grading, don't shoot in log, just shoot with no profile, shoot in S Cinetone, shoot in something that's already colored. Don't feel bad about doing that. You know, play to your strengths. If you're not good at color grading, get someone to help you with it. Buy a LUT pack, something else, you know, that really helps you color grade without having to think about it, right? There's a reason that like, you know, when I have an issue with, you know, plumbing or something, I hire a plumber. I don't try and do it myself because I'm not an expert at plumbing. So I'll just hire someone else to do it, right? And on export, I did use, uh, I applied the gamma compensation LUT, which is available for free from Sony. Uh, it just keeps all your saturation in there because uh, Sony was finding when people were exporting S-Log3 uh, out of Premiere, it was looking a little bit desaturated. So this is just a LUT that you add afterwards and then you do it during the export phase and then you're good to go and it keeps it exactly how it looked uh, in your timeline. So. And speaking of export settings real quick, uh, I exported this for social media. So it is a 4K sequence at uh, 3840 by 2160, an ultra HD sequence, but the target bit rate I just kept at 15.2 and a VBR one pass uh, for the last time I exported it. For the version I gave Kamui uh, to uh, post on social media, I tend to do VBR two pass and I'll do uh, the target bit rate for the first, target bit rate is eight and then maximum bit rate of 12. And it usually is the best quality for Instagram. Uh, I find if you do too high of a bit rate on Instagram or on Twitter, it really like, they, they then downscale it and it can look like crap. So you wanna just do the downscaling yourself and make it not the highest quality. It'll still look fantastic viewed on somebody's phone, but it's not going on YouTube or anything like that. So we just keep it at a, a bit of a lower bit rate and then we will show you just the sequence settings. Like I said, uh, 3840, 2160. Very simple, nothing crazy. 23.976 frames a second. I probably should have led with that, but let me know in the comments below that I messed that up and should have led with that. But hey, this is my first time doing one of these editing breakdowns. So you're getting to see the raw and real experience. It's like in my vlogs. I always like to show the parts where I mess up because that's what's real, you know? Let's, let's show people times that we screwed up and you know, not just the times everything was great. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I think there's nothing really crazy going on here. I've had a lot of people message me uh, from the breakdown I posted on Instagram saying, hey, this is one of the best NASCAR videos I've seen. Like this is, you know, really fantastic. And I really appreciate, you know, everyone's kind words. But the thing I really want to remind people is that, you know, you're capable of making a video like this. It's just about, you know, your inspiration, you know, your planning and making it happen, getting the shots that you want to get to build the edit that you have in your brain, storyboard it out in your mind. I had the music for this picked long before I ever got to Coda. I just went through audio's library and was like, I wanna find the right songs for Kamui. And I knew I wanted something rocking, you know, something that was rock music, cause you know, we're in Austin, Texas. It's like country music, rock music. I didn't wanna do electronic. So uh, he's a big electronic guy. He's actually, funny enough, Kamui Kobayashi is actually a really good DJ. He actually has like DJing equipment and he's very good. Um, but I wanted to use rock. And fortunately for me, Kamui is actually a very, you know, creative guy. And he is really cool. He never has any notes. He just posts, you know, whatever I give him and he's always very happy with it. And, and he's just a great guy to work for in that, in that um, you know, in that respect. So really happy with how this piece turned out. If there's anything that like you want me to you know, do a further deep dive on in the future or other breakdowns uh, I can do, uh, you know, let me know in the comments below. I'm hoping you enjoy this breakdown. It's the first time I've done one of these, so please be nice uh, in the comments uh, and not tear it apart too much. But I'm hoping to do more of these sort of breakdown videos uh, of my edits. Again, I'll just quickly mention uh, audio to you. It's a great music subscription. You can use the link in the description below and use my code SAVE70 to sign up for a pro membership and get 70% off your first year of that pro membership. That's the membership that I have and it is 
fantastic. It gives you access to Link Match AI, where you can literally just ask your client, what's a song you like? And you can go on Spotify, grab the link or grab a YouTube link, drop it in the Link Match AI, and boom, you have a bunch of songs that are of a similar vibe. So hopefully you don't have your client saying, hey, can you change the music? Which happens more often than you'd think. So, and it's probably like the worst message you can possibly get as a video editor. So yeah, definitely check out audio if you're looking for a new uh, subscription. And it also has sound effects. Totally forgot to mention that. But I'll end off just by saying thanks so much for watching my videos, following my journey. It means a lot. I'm hoping that I can, you know, inspire more people to get involved in filmmaking and motorsport filmmaking specifically. You know, it's awesome to see people messaging me saying, hey, I really love your work and it's really inspiring me to get out there. That means a lot to me. It really does. I don't just shake those off. Like that really means a lot. So thanks so much. Um, hopefully I can continue to inspire people and uh, continue pushing the envelope this year. My goal for this year is to get 3% better at every race. So hopefully we can achieve that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.